Having said that, let's look at some of the problems in object-oriented programming and the kind of constructs that were available in Java 7. And let's look at how functional programming tries to solve those problems, how the new features in Java 8 tries to solve those problems. In object-oriented programming, pretty much everything is an object. You cannot have like a piece of logic, a piece of functionality that exists in isolation. It has to be a part of a class, a part of an object. It has to be associated with it, right? This is most of the times not a problem, but it can be a problem sometimes. Because for a Java developer, when you're designing your system, when you're trying to solve a problem and creating, you know, writing your code, you tend to think in terms of things and nouns rather than actions and verbs, right? It's always a thing. For instance, let's say you want to write a, a method that greets somebody, you know, just uh, writes to the console, hello world, right? You cannot just put a function in there in isolation on its own. You have to make it a part of a class, right? You have to create a greeter class which contains that one function. You cannot have a function just be in isolation. Now, what if somebody was to say, okay, I, I don't need a class. I just need this one piece of logic, one piece of code. You cannot do that in Java 7. Let me illustrate this with an example. So let's say I want to create a new class. I'm going to call this greeter and I'm going to create this in the package io.javaprints. Let's say I want the main method as well. Now this greeter, I want to have like a, a greet method. So let's say I do a public void greet, which just prints something to the console system dot Hello world. It's a simple enough program. Now I'm going to say greeter There's a new greeter and I'm going to call that method greeter dot greet. Fairly simple. If I execute this, I should get hello world printed in the console. Now Look at what this method is doing. It is always printing hello world to the console. Now what I want this greet method to do is not just print hello world to the console all the time. I want it to take input and do different things based on the input, an input argument, right? How do I do that in Java? I want to accept an argument and that argument lets the greet method know what to do. Right? One way to do this is have the greet method contain all possible combinations of all it can do and have the input argument be a switch. It says, okay, do this thing versus do that thing and then everything is available in the greet method and based on that switch, it knows exactly what to do. But that's not elegant design. What we want to do is have the behavior itself be passed as an argument and the greet method doesn't really contain any behavior. It just takes the behavior and then it performs it, it executes it, okay? One way to do this in Java 7, I'm not talking about Java 8 now, one way to do this in the earlier versions of Java is by creating a class or an interface called greeting. Okay, you create an interface called greeting, which has a perform method. And then you pass to the greet method an instance of this greeting interface, right? You create a, an implementation of the greeting interface, which has a particular implementation of the perform method. So let me create this interface. And this is going to have a single method, public void perform. And now that I have this interface, I can send different kind of implementations to this thing, to the greet method, and have this do that instead. I'm going to say greeting dot perform. Of course, this will not work. Let me comment this out for a bit. Now, what am I doing here? I'm having the greet method accept a behavior and then perform that thing. So let me actually create an implementation of the greeting. Let's say, hello world greeting. And this implements greeting. And now this has a perform method that just prints Hello world to the console. So now in my greeter, I can call 
this greet by creating an implementation of this greeting, which is the hello world greeting. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say hello world greeting. new hello world greeting and I'm going to pass hello world greeting to the greet method. Now if I run this I should get pretty much the same output but notice what I'm doing here. I am passing in a behavior to the greet method. I can easily create a new implementation of the greeting interface and have this do something else and if I were to pass that this greet method is going to do that thing. Right? This is classic object-oriented programming. This is polymorphism in action right here. 